Thank you for watching this video. In this video, we'll create a deep excavation model with uh, a sick pile wall and two struts, and also a full cover dam with the three dimensional struts and whalers, and we'll optimize all that in a very uh, small time. So, first of all, what we'll do is to speed up things, we'll use the model wizard, we'll keep English units. We'll perform a limited equilibrium analysis in a non-linear, so we can do both of them at the same time. We've selected FHWA earth pressures for the limited equilibrium approach and simplified span with negative moments. Now, in order to do it step by step, we'll first create an excavation with struts and uh, two walls. We'll specify the excavation depth as 50, uh, 35 feet. We'll start off with the wall length, which is 55. The excavation width will set us 60 feet. We'll put the water table at minus elevation minus 15 feet. And we'll start with struts at 20 foot center, of, of center. We'll do next to edit the soil properties. On the soil properties, we have some soil types. You can select to delete all of them, but we'll just work with this F and S1 layer. Let's specify 120 for the total unit weight below the water table. We'll use the same above the water table. We'll put a small cohesion of 50 PSF. Uh, adding a small cohesion usually makes results much more realistic. We'll select an elastoplastic model here, go exponential and estimate properties from SPT. So theoretically here you can select different soil types and you can estimate uh, the elastic properties. Now for a fill layer this is quite uh, large so we'll pick a 300 KSF models of elasticity. There's also some other recommendations for the exponents, coefficients, and so on. And we'll also edit the S1 soil layer, and similarly we'll use the 500 KSF. And on the general properties, we'll use 125 pounds per cubic foot, and 100 PSF cohesion. We also have the permeabilities here, horizontal and vertical, that can be adjusted. We'll click Edit Borings, So we'll type in the top of layer elevations and minus 15 we'll put this as one layer. Click next. Edit section data. We'll select a soldier pile, uh, a sheet pile wall. And we'll start off deliberately with something small so we can later optimize it. So we'll select an AZ12. We'll click next. On the stage we'll use a tabulated elevation so we'll go at 8 feet depth and we'll also go at uh, 20 foot depth. Now since we're doing a 35 foot excavation this will leave a 15 foot uh, unbraced length. Uh, obviously you can play around with the locations of those struts uh, so you can create a more optimal uh, solution. On the next we'll select the surcharges, we'll use a strip load 0.6 KSF, 20 feet wide, 2 feet behind the wall. On the codes, we'll use US allowable stress settings. So, right now, the program has created an excavation with all the stages. You can double click on any of the uh, members. You can right click, deactivate, right click, activate. You could also draw a strat from one wall to another but right now you can go on top and just press delete this yellow table shows you the assumptions that are applicable for every stage and in the analysis you could change those assumptions based on what you want to model we'll select analyze select to the select design section
So now in the analysis we get a red that the calculation is successful, however items may be unsafe. We're estimating a displacement of 4.2 inches and we're also seeing that the wall is overstressed. This is the structural ratio, so we're seeing a 20% overstress. Now what the nonlinear analysis does is that it sets up every stage building up on the previous stage. So your displacements build up from one stage to another. And this way you tend to get a more realistic response of the wall. Now theoretically we can add here a new section, uh, but we'll do so after we optimize the first section. So let's actually see what's happening here with our wall embedment safety factors. When we click wall embed FS on the results, we see that uh, we have a minimum safety factor on the wall embedment of 1.073. So this is actually coming from the length that is available. Our rotational and passive safety factors are below 1.3. So what we'll do is, you know, theoretically, because with this is a nonlinear analysis, you cannot optimize this automatically. We just have to double click and increase the length of the wall to 60 feet. So we can reanalyze this. Now we're, our wall is still overstressed, but we can also check the results for every stage and go out and check our safety factors. And we're seeing right now on the passive mobilized safety factor we're getting a 1.33. Another important item to, be, to watch out is the hydraulic heave safety factor. We want to keep this above 1.5 when we have water. Now we can reanalyze this uh, design section. So I can, I'm right clicking, add this new section, and we'll go in the analysis and simply switch to limit equilibrium, which is the conventional approach. FHWA, in this tab, we can actually change what earth pressures are being assumed on every stage. You can click inside at any time and see if there are more options. And the same thing on the resisting pressures. So we'll right click here, we'll say edit name, we'll say nonlinear analysis. We'll right click edit name and set limit equilibrium. Now one of the interesting things that we can do is we can click on the link options. We can link this section to the nonlinear, but do not link the analysis type. So now this section is linked to the nonlinear analysis. And if we change the wall lengths here, 62 feet for example, and 62 feet here, this change also in the limited equilibrium analysis design section, or the second design section here, but our analysis are, are different. We can select to analyze all the design sections. And we can see the wall moments in the limit equilibrium analysis as well as the support reactions. So theoretically, you look, the best approach is to look at both analysis types and select the worst analysis between the two, the worst condition. Now that we're here, one of the things that we would like is to optimize our design sections. So we'll select optimize design section. First of all, the program picks up the recommended steel sections for the struts, so we'll select I prefer to select a 24 inch by 3 eighths of an inch pipe. The first PP is a pipe uh, section and the 24 in indicates the outside diameter. The 0.375 indicates the wall thickness. And now also selecting on uh, the second level strut. We can select, that's the most effective section here, a 13 inch pipe by 0.375. And now the program is proposing 
sections for the steel seat pile. We can select an AZ-17-700 that appears to be the most effective section. Of course when you play around with the steel seat pile sections what is important is to also look at your displacements. So we have optimized our design sections. We can reanalyze, make sure that everything is fine. So now everything checks fine. Our wall embedment safety factors <coughs> from the nonlinear analysis are also above 1.3. Sometimes you might want to target the 1.5 safety factor. We can check results for every design section and select which wall. And now with that, what we'll do is we'll create uh, a 3D model. So we'll go to the model wizard. We'll create a 90 foot excavation in the X direction by 60 foot in the Y. Let's presume that this is a rectangular coffer down that we want to model. Click Next. We'll keep this setting at 50%. Next, Next. And the program has created all the stages of a coffer dump. Now in order to zoom in and zoom out, I'm just using the roller button. If you press the roller, you can move left and right. You can double click on the struts double click on the whalers, double click on the seat pile wall. You can also draw elements from this uh, buttons right here. So what we'll do is we'll select analyze 3D frames. We're seeing some of our whalers are overstressed and we're also seeing the various stages uh, results for, for the struts. Now an important thing to realize is that when you're going on the stages, the program is showing your low support level that is active at that time. So right now everything is at the elevation minus 8, that we're seeing that here. And on stage 5 everything is at elevation minus 20 in terms of where the struts are. We'll select optimize. Now the program is looking through all available steel sections and tries to determine the 10 most effective sections for each level of struts and for our whalers. You could actually differentiate and assign a different section on your corner whalers or center uh, struts uh, or your corner struts. So now the program is proposing W30 by 191. For the whalers and for the struts. We can decide which section to keep. We'll reanalyze the frame and we see that everything is fine and all our checks are good. We can then go on the cost estimate and see our wall costs and also the estimated uh, tonnage for steel seat piles as well as for the struts and the whalers. If you want to specify different costs, you can go on the, on the Optimize, on the Cost Options, you can select your city, pick up the wall costs, then on Strat you can define the different installation and material costs per ton, 
and the same thing on the uh, whalers. Thank you for watching this video. Please feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Have a nice day.